In July 2017, I had the opportunity to work with the University of Bournemouth and the National Trust to survey areas of heath around the Purbeck Peninsula. I also had the opportunity to take film of many plants and animals, and I've now compiled that film into a short documentary. We start off on Godlingston Heath. There are two main types of heath in Godlingston. This is dry heath. The most common species of heath here is ling heather, followed by bell heather. The dry heath is also home to gorses, grasses and bracken, but we'll talk about those later. First, the heather. This is ling heather, the dominant plant in most areas of heathland. In early July it hasn't begun to flower yet, but it is still an important food source for animals from heather beetles to deer. Bell heather, on the other hand, was in flower. With the ling not in flower, the bell heather provided an important food source for many pollinators. In particular, the honeybees, which seem to proliferate around this species of plant. One not so welcome plant denizen of these heaths is this bracken. Bolstered by Britain's warming climate and no longer hampered by human usage, this incredibly competitive plant has taken over much of Britain's heathland. Then there's the European gorse. Gorse is a leguminous plant, meaning it has nitrogen-fixing root nodules. This, combined with its spiny, ungrazable leaves, makes it an incredibly tenacious competitor in these dry heaths. Dwarf gorse is a comparatively less ferocious species. Its softer spines mean that it can actually be grazed, so it doesn't take over the land so readily. Dwarf gorse is also found on wet heaths as well as dry heaths, but more on those later. The species of grass shown in this video is bristlebent. This species is found mostly around the southwest of England in these dry acidic soils. There's also another species of bent called common bent, although in the heaths it's actually less common than bristlebent. Common bent can be found almost everywhere in the UK, in grasslands more often than heathlands. The moss shown here is an invasive species from South Africa called the heath star moss. It colonises patches of bare ground caused by heath burning, and forms broad mats that can prevent seeds from germinating. These mosses can also end up competing with the native branching Cladonia lichens. Then again, not all Cladonia species are at risk. This one, filmed at nearby Sleep Heath, has clung to a tree stump, and so is well out of the way of the moss. And if you look closely at the star moss, you can see the red British soldier lichens sticking out. This species can live in and around the moss. However, the most common lichen around the dry heaths is this branching species. I'm currently walking through a wet heath. This is a rather different sort of heath, as the soil is much wetter, but also because there's many more species of plants here. The first notable difference with a wet heath is the heathers. For you see, while there is still ling heather, instead of bell heather, there generally tends to be cross-leaved heath. Cross-leaved heath is so named for having four small leaves at regular intervals up the stem in an X-shaped pattern. It is found in damp acidic soils like wet heaths and mires. Dorset heath is a less common species, closely related to cross-leaved heath. It has longer flowers which are brighter pink. Occasionally you can find hybrids of these two species. The dominant grass species in this area is purple moorgrass. This purple-tipped species forms large tussocks on wet heaths. Contrary to its appearance and what its name may suggest, deer grass is not a grass at all, but a spiked rush. Like purple moor grass, it forms tussocks, but is smaller and thinner. It has a tufted tip said to resemble the ears of a deer. Cotton grass is also not actually a grass, rather a sedge. The leaves of this plant are red-tipped, but what is more recognisable is the fluffy seed head that gives it its name. Yet another plant that may be mistaken for grass is bog asphodel, due to its silky grass-like leaves. However, it can be distinguished at this time of year by its tall yellow flower, which attracts bees. This small flowering plant is called white-beaked sedge because its petals resemble the beak of a bird. One of the more unusual plants on the heath is the sundew. They are carnivores, meaning they attract and digest insects to obtain nitrogen, allowing them to thrive in nutrient-poor areas. There are multiple species of sundew. These are oblong-leaved sundew, and these are round-leaved sundew. Most of the sundew were not yet in flower, but you could see the unopened bud on some. Sphagnum is a genus of mosses which encompasses almost 400 species, some of which could be found on the wet heath. Sphagnum absorbs a lot of moisture from rain, keeping the wet heaths wet. 
The Myers of Dorset are very similar to the wet heaths. One difference is that the Myers are even more damp, hosting bogs and pools of water. There is generally more diversity of sphagnum moss, and heather is less dominant, with some areas completely lacking heather altogether. One of the residents of the Myers and heaths are the dragonflies. The larvae of these grow in the pools of water and then hatch as adults in the summer to breed. There are many species of dragonfly on these heaths. This is a brown hawker. And this is a keeled skimmer. Dragonflies are top insect predators, hunting flying insects such as midges and mosquitoes, and sometimes larger insects like bees and moths. To find another insect predator on these heaths, we have to travel to the Aggleston Rock. This enormous slab of tertiary sandstone is an impressive landmark as it is, but it's also an important habitat for many bees and wasps. This insect here is a digger wasp, and they hunt caterpillars. What they'll do is they'll take dead caterpillars and stuff them into the wall, and they'll also lay their eggs in the cracks in the wall. When the eggs hatch, the young will have some caterpillars to eat. Yet another insect predator is the heath tiger beetle. The largest of Britain's tiger beetle species, this insect has declined by over 65% in the last 40 years. The Dorset heaths are one of the only places where this species can be found in plentiful numbers, but conservation groups hope to increase its population. There are, of course, animals that feed on the heather and other plants of the heath. This is the caterpillar of the beautiful yellow underwing moth, a species commonly associated with heather. As caterpillars, they feed on leaves, and as adults, they feed on flowers. And this is the fox moth caterpillar. At this time of year, the caterpillars of this species are small, but as they grow, they will become large and fluffy before hibernating through the winter and hatching as adults the next spring. The Purbeck Heaths are also home to many reptiles, and some, such as the smooth snake and the sand lizard, aren't found in many other places in the UK. Unfortunately, I didn't see either of these two species, but I did see a grass snake and a common or viviparous lizard. The barred grass snake is Britain's largest reptile, growing to a metre long and feeding mainly on amphibians. It was only recently split into a separate species from the mainland European species. The common or viviparous lizard is the most northerly occurring species of land reptile, aided by the fact that it usually gives birth to live young. Smaller than the less common sand lizard, it feeds on insects and arachnids.